Welcome, welcome everyone. Hi, my name is Gabby with Arizona Science Center and thank you so much for joining us for our 1 p.m. demonstration today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be dissecting a grasshopper. So we're going to take a look at the external and internal anatomy and learn a little bit about our insect critters. So I hope you're jumping with excitement for this one. So in the insect world, there's over a million different species. A grasshopper is one specific species. You might have also heard of the term locust. So grasshoppers and locusts are very similar. They just have a few features that are different. Um, but a locust is a grasshopper, but not all grasshoppers are locusts. So it's one group in the grasshopper family. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at a grasshopper for dissection. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my screen over to our little grasshopper friend. All right, so the grasshopper is a little interesting. If you've watched any of our demonstrations on here before, they don't have the same features as a lot of other animals that you might see around. So the grasshopper is segmented, which means it's broken into different portions. So there's three segments on the grasshopper. There's the head up here in the front, the thorax, which is kind of the middle of the body, and then the abdomen, which is the very back of the grasshopper body. Now up on the head, there are two antenna, which are right here. Here's one antenna. Oh, let me see if I can focus that. Here's one antenna and here's the other. These are really good sensory organs that they use to sense vibrations in the ground for prey and predators. They have, um, they have three ocelli, which are simple eyes, which are located in the head. And then they have two compound eyes, which can see a little bit better than our eyes. So one right here and one right here. Um, in the thorax, they have kind of three sections to the thorax, and for each section, they have a pair of legs. So you can see there's a front pair of legs here, a kind of medial pair of legs right here in the middle, and then these back legs are a lot larger, and this is what really helps keep them mobile and jump around. And each of those have tiny little spikes that stick off the end. These are for sensory and a little bit for defense. And then at the very back of the body, this is the abdomen. So in the abdomen, um, this is where they release feces. This is also how they mate. They have something called an ovipositor at the very end that helps them reproduce. And... Um, they also have wings on their body, so that helps them fly. So they have two sets of wings. Here's one layer. They kind of sit on top of each other. So the top layer is harder, helps protect this, the, 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 the wing underneath. This wing is a lot thinner, a lot more delicate, but this really helps their flight. So again, the top layer is a little bit more protective than that bottom layer there. Now, grasshoppers are also a lot different from us. They don't have bones in their body. So they are an invertebrate, which means they don't have a vertebrae like we do, like a, a backbone. So they have something called an exoskeleton. So that means the outside of their body is their skeleton. It's very hard on the outside. This helps protect their organs and everything inside. So if we take a look at the head again, we were talking about the eyes that they have, their antenna. They also have a mouth, which might be a little tricky to see. Let me see if I can focus it a little bit closer up. So on their mouth, they have a mandible, like a jaw, and they also have really small feeding appendages. So if I kind of pull this away, can you kind of see? It looks like a mini arm around the mouth. So these help bring food into their mouth. These kind of, um, they're kind of like mini hands that help them feed. So grasshoppers, they do eat grass, they eat leaves and other crops. And a lot of grasshoppers are actually omnivores. So that means they're eating both plant and, plants and meat. So sometimes that's smaller insects and little critters like that. So those feeding appendages are helping them tear off food and bring that food into their mouth, which is right here. 
Now, once it enters their mouth, they have some features that we do too. They have a trachea and a stomach and everything. So we're gonna get into that in just a second, but there's a few more features that I want to show you guys on the outside of their body. So again, we talked about the three segments of their body, one, two, three. Now they don't really have a brain like we do. They have something called ganglion, ganglion, which is like a brain. And each segment of their body is controlled by its own ganglion. So they're pretty complex, even though they're such a small, simple critter. Now some other cool features that they have is they need to breathe, right? Most uh, living organisms on Earth need some sort of device to breathe. So if you take a deep breath in, a deep breath out, what are we using to breathe? If you said lungs, you are correct. So we have lungs that helps us with gas exchange, with breathing oxygen. Now, do you think that insects like our grasshopper has lungs? So they don't have lungs exactly, but they have something similar. Along their abdomen here, they have really teeny tiny holes, which are called spiracles, spiracles. So these are tiny openings that connect to trachea. We have trachea in our body as well. And these are special tubes that help with gas exchange. So that's giving them oxygen in their body and that's helping with breathing. Now, uh, one cool fact is at the Science Center, we actually have Madagascar hissing cockroaches. They have spiracles as well, and they do hiss. They use their spiracles to make that hissing sound by blowing air out of them. So that's very unique to them. The grasshopper here cannot do that, but they still have some really cool adaptations. Now, one more feature that I'll show you guys on the outside is underneath the wing, I can gently lift the wing here. They have something called a tympanum, which vibrates with sound. Oh, this grasshopper's kind of hard to show here. It's trying to hide it from you guys. But underneath here, if you can see under the wing, kind of that more flesh colored flat spot. So this vibrates with sound waves. So this is one of their sensory organs. It's kind of like an ear. So if a predator is walking up, that tympanum will vibrate and it'll send uh, messages to the grasshopper to know, hey, I gotta get in here. A bird's gonna try and eat me. So this can help them escape predators and also help find prey um, and things like that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut through the exoskeleton down the abdomen. So I'm gonna start up here and gently cut through our grasshopper to look at some of the internal anatomy. So they're pretty simple inside, but they do have some cool features that are only found in insects, which we'll take a look at. All right, so now that we cut through that, if I can get this open here, we're gonna be able to actually see the spiracles. So it's a little muddy inside, but if you see these kind of strings that are connecting to the side of the body, that's those um, those, those uh, trachea that are connecting to the, the, the tubes on the outside of the body. So again, that's how they're getting that gas exchange, that oxygen that they need for their body. They do, they breathe out the sides of their body. Now inside their body, they do have some important organs up here at the front, if you can see that little bulb, that is called a crop. So a crop is uh, a digestive organ that we don't have in our body, but insects and even birds have this crop. It's another part of digestion. Um, in birds, they use that to kind of break through seeds and things like that. So this crop connects down to something called the gastric cica, which is like a giant digestive gland. So that's this kind of middle section here. Their stomach is beneath the gastric cica. And then at the very end, if it, it's kind of chunky, but if you can see these kind of strands, they're almost spaghetti-like down here. These are called the Malpighian tubes. And these are just like kidneys in our body. So they remove nitrogenous waste. So they get rid of all the yucky stuff that the 
uh, grasshopper doesn't need in their diet and helps um, filtration. All right, so those are some of our main appendages in our grasshopper here. Again, we got to learn about their really intricate feeding techniques, how they breathe and how it's different than our body as well. Their cool adaptations for flying and jumping. And even though some people may think insects are kind of gross, they're really important to different ecosystems. So not only is this guy eating things in its ecosystem, but things are eating it. So they're a very important part of all of the beautiful environments that make Earth very special to live here. All right, so if you guys have any questions about our dissection today, feel free to throw them into the uh, chat and we'll get back to you about that. Um, thank you guys so much for making observations with us about our grasshopper dissections. Now when you see grasshoppers out on the sidewalk, you'll look at them a little bit differently and see what makes them tick. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Check out our website, azscience.org, for more awesome science you can do at home and some of the other demonstrations that we've done before. Bye, guys. Have a great day.